Hello, horse friends, and welcome to the Imperfect Question. This week, I'm going to be having a lesson on Comanche about rhythm, and this is my instructor, Jen. She has many hats you've met her before. So, Jen, what kind of an instructor are you? Um, I am a British Horse Society accredited professional coach, which translates in old money to the BHS AI qualification. And I'm also a British Horseback Archery Association coach, but I think we'll stick with the BHS for today. <laughs> Okay, to start with, you just need to concentrate on warming up Comanche, letting him move freely forward, getting used to the arena. You can pop in some turns and some circles. The way I like to teach, I know that you can ride, you can pick a path, unless I'm saying I want to see a 20 metre circle here, there or wherever. If you feel you need to pop some shapes in, just go for it. It's not the kind of lesson where you're going to get told off for taking the wrong left turn. <laughs> so while you're doing a bit of warming up, remind me a bit about Comanche and yours journey and sort of what stage you're at with your schooling. Okay, so I've had him his whole life and he did start when he was three years old and I did have a little bit of help with some of the starting because at the time I wasn't quite ready to, to okay. train him fully myself then um, to the canter and things like that Good boy. and then we've been really slow progress people we basically we would have large gaps without riding at all and then we do maybe kind of two or three months here and there of riding and then a big big gap again and then it wasn't really till he was about 12 years old, 21 this month, so that gives you a comparison, until we moved to a yard with a school. And we did get quite serious about groundwork and some riding. And um, we've never seriously, seriously schooled. We've only really just done individual exercises, if you know what I mean. So it yeah. might be like to trot to a corner or do a figure eight shape or uh, canter a certain way or a certain place or something. So we've never really done schooling, schooling, if you know, if you know what I mean. So no, that, that's great. So we're, you know, he's had a nice slow start. He's an older lad now. We're not expecting to have a round frame by the no. end of the session. We're just looking for a bit of a, a starter in rhythm. And you said to me at the beginning that you're finding your trot rhythms a little bit inconsistent. Yes. And just wanting to do a bit to work on that. Yes. So he cool. kind, so, kind of um, goes and stops when, um, when I want to. That, so the go and stop's not too bad. Uh, but when we're going, it's a bit like, rrr, 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 you know, kind of. Yeah, that <laughs> absolutely makes sense. I'm just trying to work on a bit of consistency within that rhythm. And that is a great place to work from because if you think about the German scales of training, which are the foundation for most dressage based ways of working your horse in, rhythm is at the very base of that scale. So achieving a good rhythm with your horse, you can bring him up to trot and do, start to do a little bit of trot work now. Yeah. If you like. um, but establishing Rhythm and relaxation is the foundation of everything else. So without that, you'll struggle to move forward, you'll struggle to get him through and to get into connection. So it's a good, a good choice for a topic of lesson. So just push him forward, really make sure that he's nice and free. You don't want him rushing, but also you're warming up. You want him to be able to move his body, feel nice and free. Lots of snorting is fine. If you try and pop him on a big figure of eight, okay. so you work a little bit on both reins in this trot. Good. Now, one of the things I find quite useful for horses that have a bit of a here and there rhythm is to count. So to think about either a tune that you can think of in the rhythm of your trot, or just counting the paces 
one, two, one, two, one, two. And just uh, your mind and your internal voice, you can do it externally if you want to say it out loud, you can. But that will create a rhythm within you, which you can then, hopefully with your rising and your weight and your body language, start to keep that rhythm and tempo more, um, what's the word? I've lost the word. Rhythmic? Consistent <laughs> throughout the trot. There you go. It came back. Good. So there you feel that he's just getting a bit stuffy behind. He yeah. says, we've been trotting for a minute now, Mum. It's time to stop. <laughs> so he was just backing off that trot a little bit. So you need to be quite on the ball to be able to squeeze him on and say, no, we're going to stay in that nice rhythm. Okay. Let's have a few more minutes of warm up. Let's See if we can get him looking a little bit freer than that. Good. Think about your position as you go round as well. So you want to think about being nice and tall, shoulders up and back, hands up off his neck. Bring your wrists to the outside so that your thumbs are on top of your reins. Think about all that riding school stuff. Yeah. Straight lines between your ear, your shoulder, your hip and your heel and letting the weight hang down long into your heel. So hanging, feel the weight down the back of your leg. Good. Nice, rising with your hips forward. When you're ready, bring him back down to walk for a minute. So tell me how you do your walk transition. Okay, so what from walk to trot or from, from that, that transition there, Describe to me what you did to ask him to come back to walk. Okay, so in the trot, I was trying to be active with my body. And then when I wanted walk, well, in this occasion, I did sit, sit down. I would have, but I could do it from sit, sit and trot as well. And I would just calm my body and put a slightly different rhythm in to, to ask for a walk. Yeah, so what I would say is what I'd want to see for a downward transition is that as you're trotting and you know you want to come back down to walk, you balance him with a slight half halt with your outside rein and squeeze your legs at the same time. You relax your body into your seat, go sitting and breathe out and ask him to come back down to walk. So the most important bit of that, and with all transitions, is that you balance your horse before you make the transition. And yes. what that does is it stops them falling down into the next pace. Yes. Okay. It's the same with an upward transition, but it's easier to see with the downward transitions because yeah. you see a lot of people do a really lovely trot work and they're going around really well and you say, bring them back to walk and the horse goes, yeah. and then plods on. So <laughs> just be mindful of that. So like a pre-warning for Yeah, so before. your little half hole is a pre-warning and it just says, Bring your hind legs under a little bit, balance yourself, steady yourself, something is changing. Okay. And then you ask him to walk and he's ready. Because it's not falling back down into walk and rest. We want the walk to be as good as the trot is. Okay. Hey, we're kicking up a bit of dust in here, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> okay. Pop him onto a four loop serpentine, just get a little bit of bend in and okay. start to think about your walk rhythm. You're going to tell me if you're speeding up or slowing down. Slowing down walk, then. Yeah, speeding and your now, walk needs to be active. <laughs> so up. when's he most likely to lose his rhythm here? On the turn. On the turns. And why is that? Um, because his weight is having to shift for the turn. Yeah, and it's more difficult for him to move his frame on the bend. And he thinks, oh, I'm just going to slow it all down a bit, balance myself. So you need to get him to maintain that consistent rhythm through the turns, keep your leg on, know when he's likely to start slowing down, and you're going to support him with your outside rein. Okay. Okay, your outside rein is going to control any drift or falling out through that turn, and it's going to support him with your outside leg. Okay. It's going to, so your outside aids are really important, basically, in controlling and supporting the turns. So your inside's going to ask for bend. You're going to ask for bend with your inside leg and your inside hand. And he's going to push that into your outside hand. Does that make sense? 
a little. I get a this little. is where I get I get very confused with inside. Yeah, and it's quite. It. It's quite the, so with your aids when you're thinking about schooling, it's it's really quite a lot to think about because each yeah. limb is doing something completely well, different. I think I struggle because we I've used um, in in the training aspect I've used limbs individually. Yeah. So I've I've perhaps I've used say this leg on the nearer the front to turn the shoulders or nearer the back to turn the back, and then the other leg's not particularly doing anything. Yes. If, if you know what I mean. Yes. So where you're looking at the difference now, what your other leg wants to do, so you're using your inside leg to make the turn along with your inside hand, but yes. your outside leg is controlling the quarters. It's still doing what it, you're used to it doing, yeah. but it's just saying, I'd like you to turn, but not too much. Okay. I'd like you to turn, but here's the line you're going to stay between. Right. Anyway, how are you finding your walk rhythm? It it's not too bad now. When I was turning a lot, it was slowing down in the middle and on the bend. Okay. So do one more serpentine and walk. Okay. And I want you to really concentrate on keeping the rhythm consistent and even, keeping the energy there so that you keep the rhythm, supporting him through the turns where it's difficult for him. And hopefully he will, he will thank you for that by maintaining his rhythm through those turns. So think about Putting your leg on a bit here, supporting with your outside leg. Good, well that was done. Better, yeah. That was a better turn, wasn't it? Yeah. So looking where you're going, thinking about your next turn. Keeping, the, keeping that nice rhythm. Can you count it in your head? Are you counting one, three, four, one, two, three, four? <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying. I get a bit lost as I'm doing the legs. So Walk's like, quite difficult it? to feel. There, you've just lost it a little bit on that yeah. last turn. And I yeah. think that's because you were slightly thinking about something else and you just thought, oh, we're just walking. Okay, bring him up to trot at K. Okay. So think about improving the quality of that walk a little bit. And you're going to think about a nice active trot that you can feel a little bit in your hand. So you want to be pushing him forwards from your leg and just just having a slight conversation with your hand. I'm not suggesting you yoink up your contact or anything, but that you can feel his mouth and he can feel that he can hold that contact. Yeah. Think about your rhythm. Keep it moving the same because he's starting to shuffle with his back end. And that, when, can you feel him as he starts to, sh like starts to slow it down a bit and starts to go, oh, I don't know if I want to put this effort in. That's when you need to be saying, yes, actually, I'd like you to put that effort in, please. Okay. I usually describe this trot as a two-beat walk because it's so... Well, quick. there's not a very... So a trot is a two-beat pace. Yes. yes, correct? Yes. And it's diagonal pairs, and there is supposed to be a clear moment of suspension between each stride. That's what okay. we're laughing. Comanche does not do suspension today. <laughs> no, I what... think that is something in the future we may be able to achieve. Okay. But today, I think the suspension is um, possibly not 10 minutes away. <laughs> Good, well done. So really ask him to move forwards. He's a big horse. He's got a big frame. Come on. You can ask for a bit more trot. Bring your hands up, open your chest out, and rise from your hips. Think about leading with your belly button and your eyes and your boobs. Okay. Good. Really concentrate on counting that rhythm. And if you feel it slowing down, push him forward. Squeeze him with your leg. Pop him onto a serpentine. Let's make it a little bit harder. That was just a little bit more of an ask. <laughs> so, Keep your outside leg on. Good. Look where you're going. And push through that next turn. Good, keep going, keep going, don't lose it there. Well done. Good. Keep moving. Good. And you have to ride every stride, especially with a horse like Comanche, who's very, very willing and very compliant and very well trained, but a little bit energy efficient, <laughs> I think, is the term I'd use for him. He's, He's not lazy. <laughs> he just doesn't want to put in more effort than is necessary to do what you're asking. Actually, the activity in that trot and the hind leg is really improving coming down it that is, long yeah. side. 
You feel a bit springier? It does, definitely, yeah. Good, right, don't let him rush off now. <laughs> the opposite. So say yes, please. I would like this impulsion and this bit more power, but I don't want it to turn into a race. I want you to contain it in your body, not send it shooting out the front door. So think about shortening your reins ever so slightly and squeezing him into your hand. Keep the leg on, keep the leg on. Ask for more trots, but hold it a little bit. Talk to him with your inside hand and hold steady with your outside rein. Good, squeeze him into the corners. He thinks you're going to ask him for canter at any moment, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He's just ready to nearly go for it. How's the rhythm of that trot feeling now? Yeah, it's good. much better. Good. The quality of the trot looks much better from here. It feels better. Yeah, there's a lot more activity there. Definitely. So rhythm isn't your speed. Rhythm is defined by the regularity of the gait. So the fact that it is a two beat gait. And what we want to see is an even length stride and an even height stride. Okay. And Comanche is quite even in length, but height varies quite a lot. Right. Good. So really squeeze him into your hand, pop him on a serpentine again. Now you might have to hold him a little bit more than you're used to when you're doing a serpentine okay. in trot, because you have to support him with this bit more power to make those turns. Good. Well done. Well ridden. I'm doing a really good job at hiding behind your camera. Look around your corner and you have to concentrate every stride. Pop, keep him on the serpentine. Good. Leg on. How's he feeling to you? Much better on the corners. Yeah. Except for that one. Yeah, except for, <laughs> obviously, it's my concentration. Yeah. I distract you with shiny things all around the school. <laughs> Good. Okay, so you know what a metronome is? Yes. Yes? So set a metronome in your head, an imaginary metronome, obviously, yeah. <laughs> when you're happy, when you find a pace that you're happy with, and see if you can stick to it for a full circuit of the school. Okay. Well corrected. Good, Becky. How did that feel? I think we lost it twice, a little bit. But you corrected it both yeah. times. Change your rein here. Good. Are you happy to do a little bit of canter work? Yes, yeah, we'll try. <laughs> I remember we didn't do canter work and then we discovered horseback archery did a lot of canter work. Yeah. And then <laughs> I don't know where we're at with the canter work. So, when you're ready, just pop him up to canter. And we're not going to do much canter work, but we're just going to have a little canter on both reins. Okay. Because I find a lot of the time it improves the quality of your trot. Okay. Good. Okay, sit up nice and tall and push him forwards. If you need to hold him, use your outside rein. Good, keep going, keep him going. Very nice. At A, you can bring him back down to trot. And don't drop him. Hold him nice trot. Think nice trot, nice trot, nice trot, nice trot, nice trot, nice trot. Nice trot. <laughs> That's, That's the hard bit. It's always a downwards transition. Very good. That was actually a very nice sprightly canter. It was for him. Woof, he said I had a fun. No objections today. <laughs> Right, Pivo's lost him. Searching for horse currently. Oh, I'll have so, to go around it. So Hold you on. can change the rein, and when you're ready, you can go for another canter on the other rein. It'll find me to so. go in front. Should How's he doing for puff? There, he's found you again. Good. Oh, yeah, there you go. He's found you. So prepare him for the canter. Okay. When you're ready. 
you can go for it. So you want to remember to have a squeeze into your hand, little half halt. Good. Nice. Sitting up. Holding with your outside rein. Good. And at C, you're going to bring him back down to trot. Not before. And you're not going to drop him. You're going to nice trot. Nice trot. Leg on. Outside rein. Squeeze with the legs. Better. Good. Better. That was better. <laughs> right. Get a nice rhythm going. Get something you're really happy with. Feel that. Feel that. He's like, oh, we're going to go again. Mom. We're going to go again. <laughs> and you just had a little canter for fun. That was a nice canter. I thought you'd struggle more getting him to. Yeah, I did. Get him to come around. He looked lovely. He's in very nice condition for his age, isn't he? <sighs> I think he's he like, lacks, yeah, let's go. He lacks a little in top line because I haven't put the work in when he was younger. Yeah. But also, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't do huge amounts of gymnastic work, does he? So. <laughs> Good. Right. Find your rhythm. Concentrate on it. When you've got your rhythm, bring him onto another serpentine. Think metronome in your head. Support him with your outside around the turns. I've lost it a bit there. It's okay. You can come back down another serpentine. I mean, I feel like he's looking a lot better than when you started. Yes, he's not yeah, shuffling he, with the back end so much. He definitely feels it. He's not so stop starty. Does. And he's not, yeah, he's not coming in fits and spurts. He's listening to you. You're saying trot and he's maintaining that trot with you. And when we go round, it's just like one or two times he's coming back or forward yeah. rather than like every Good. two seconds. <laughs> so pop him on a 20 metre circle at A. Yeah. So really think about using your outside aids to support him and not let him drift or run the camera or me over. I'm going to go just inside, I think. Good. Good. Nice, quiet riding. Keep squeezing him on. Keep this rhythm. And it's quite different trying to ride like this because you have to micromanage everything. Yeah. You know, you, the idea is that you get to a point where you don't have to micromanage anything. But realistically, at the moment, you'll be thinking about every one of your limbs and all of his body and every stride. Yes. Okay, so pop him on his 20 metre circle here. Good. Think about bending around your inside leg. Supporting him with your outside rein and your outside leg. Come around that circle again. Really think about getting it nice and round. It was Look a bit around your circle. Keep counting your rhythm in your head. Wasn't a very straight circle. Was no, it? it was not. It was more straight than it was round, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Hold with your. Keep a constant contact with that outside rein. There we go. Close your fingers around your reins. Keep your shoulders up and back. Right, this is slowing down quite a lot. It was quite nice. I can't fault the slower trot, but you want to maintain the rhythm. Yeah. So pick something and stick with it. Change the rein when you're ready and then do circles on the other rein, please. Okay. And we've got one more exercise before you're allowed to collapse in a heap once you've done <laughs> these. But I'll give you a breather between these circles and that next one because it's hard. Good. Just check your diagonal. Sorry. Thank you. I can't remember, am I doing a circle or not yet? Yes. Sorry. You're going to have your circles in this train. Think about your rhythm. He's got a bit flat. He's actually, I don't even think he's picking up his front feet far enough that if we weren't on sand, you'd be going anywhere. Lost that. <laughs> <laughs> sort of kicking his way through the arena at the moment. Good. That's it. Keep that activity. Keep the activity. Oh boy. So come on, Clancy, you've done really well. Okay, when you get back to C, bring him down to walk. Oh, I'm lost. That's oh, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Don't worry. Sorry, sorry. You can bring him back down to walk at A if you make it a nice transition and a nice walk afterwards. 
still take my chance. <laughs> Good. That didn't lose anything though, did it? No. It is a bit now, but it didn't then. Well done. Right. You can have one circuit oh. and a change of rein if you want it in walk as a rest. You're yeah. not done, Comanche. You've got one very nasty exercise to go. I'm sorry. So what we're doing, a, a walk circle? Um, you can just have a walk wherever you like. You can do a circle, okay. a change of rein, okay. round the edge. This is a break. You're having a break. Break, come on, Chief. One minute break. A walking break. <laughs> Let him have a stretch. Maybe come down a long diagonal with a long rein. Think about your free walk on a long rein type thing. The next exercise we are going to do is a spiraling exercise. Okay. okay. So he's quite used to lateral asks. Yeah. So it shouldn't be too difficult for him. But he is quite a big framed, fairly stiff horse. So the closing down the circle might be difficult. Okay. You're going to pop yourself onto a 20 meter circle, yeah. either at A or at C. I don't mind where you feel more comfortable. You're going to get your trot rhythm and it's going to be a nice, even rhythm. Okay. You're going to have to ride hard. You're going to have to think about keeping him in that nice rhythm. Okay. Once you're happy with your trot rhythm, you don't have to do it just yet, but when you're happy with your trot rhythm, then you're going to start the exercise. I'm going to be in the centre of your circle. Okay. And you are going to spiral in until you get as close to me as you can without running me over. You get to have to lose points if um, you run me over. We well, should be alright. You're right. going to get into a smaller circle around me as you can. Bearing in mind, the smaller that circle is, the harder it's going to be to maintain your rhythm. Yes. Yeah. So you're you're thinking about rhythm today. It is imperative that you maintain the rhythm. If you lose the rhythm, push him back out. Okay. Get the rhythm back and come back in. Okay. okay? Yes. So you're going to spiral into me. Yeah. So you're circling around me in a little thing. And then when you've got as small as you want to go, and don't try and run me over, it's fine. It can be quite big around me. You're going to just leg yield him out and spiral back out okay. with a few spirals until you get onto the track. Okay. So you're making a snail shell, basically. Okay. If I had you dip your feet in paint. Shall we try? The snail shell, no smashing the instructor. Okay. Keeping your rhythm, you're going to have to use your outside aids, okay? That's it. To stop him drifting, and you've got to use your inside aids to, to bring him in. Okay. And that is your call, so you've got one chance on each rein. Okay. Right. Okay, when you're ready, you can begin. I shall try and turn my alarm off, but make sure you get that nice trot, that nice rhythm before you start. I can't work out where my alarm is. Okay, right. That looks nice to me. Good, right, good. Now remember, keep it forwards with your legs. Ask him to come in with your inter, hold him with your outside rein. Did you feel that drift? Yeah. Okay, so that is where your outside leg and your outside rein come oh, in. Oh, oh. They are to stop him drifting out. So now the quarters are drifting slightly. So you use your outside leg a bit back behind the girth. So come in. Good. Good. I, I don't know why I get people to do this exercise. It's really dizzy. good training aid, but it makes me feel so dizzy. <laughs> That's it. Push with your outside. Really push him in with your outside. Yeah, good. Very nice. Look at the nice rhythm you've kept. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's <laughs> collapsed. Right, get the chop. Right, you're a bit bent onto the inside. Push him out again. There you go. Then push him out again. Hold him with your outside. Push him out. Have you ever done that exercise before? I do it on the ground. Yeah, it's quite difficult. And actually, yeah. I think that was a very good attempt for first time on, on the saddle. <laughs> good. So, change the rein. Change the end of the school. So, KXF. A little bit in front there. Good. You're going to do the same exercise. So get your trot nice first. Keep it balanced. Keep it rhythmical. Count the beats in your head. And begin your spiral when you're ready. Remember to hold it with your outside aids. Keep that rhythm. Good. Well done. So you can feel his shoulders off. 
Hold with your own. Good. Well done. Keep the rhythm. Look where you're going. Good. Use your outside. So you don't want to turn his head too much. Sorry. You want him to bend around your leg. Good. It's very difficult. He's better on the other own, isn't he? Yes. Good. Keep coming. Don't lose the rhythm. Don't lose the rhythm. Keep the trot. Don't want to turn around, but if you walk him by the time I turn around, are you very good? I'd say that was tight enough on this rein. Okay. Try not to bend your body into the circle. I don't. Whoop, right. that's it gonna, he, he thinks that's it. I think that could be as much my error that side because my right knee is my my knee that has push an old him out. Use your, Bring your leg back off the girth and push him back out onto that bigger circle. Okay. Yeah, and I mean it will be a combination deal. There's always keep that trot nice. One circle. And then you're going to give me a nice trot once large around the outside of the arena, keeping that rhythm. Count it. Good. Big, nice, free trot. Good boy. Come on. Look where you're going. Keep it, keep it nice, keep it forward. And when you get to B, you're going to come back down to walk. But it's going to be a lovely transition. You're going to be prepared. You're going to be looking where you're going. And you're just going to breathe out. And it's going to be a nice walk. Very nice. I like that. That was a good downward transition. So I think that will do the pair of you yeah. for today. How did you find that? How can you just turn in and stop on me now? Walk. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to walk him off. Work it, come on. Walk and talk, it, Becky. Work it. <laughs> um, physical. <laughs> um, shows how little we do a Comanche <laughs> for both of us. I think we did very well. And no complaining either, which yeah. I like. No. Well, yeah, no, I, he definitely improved his rhythm. Like I said, he was definitely going more evenly without having to keep going and stopping and going and stopping. Um, so I think, I think you've pointed out that I need to take control of it, I suppose, or own up to it, be my responsibility to remind him to go forward yeah. rather than just, I think a lot of the time, I mean, like you said, you perhaps have to go through a time of a small amount of micromanaging first before you get it. Whereas I've been trying too much to, to be just his responsibility. So that's worked as for a lot of things. But for our rhythm, it's, it's not got the idea and I need to help, hold his hand and help him along. Yeah, with it. exactly that. And I think you need, you need to not think of that as a forever thing, yeah. but as a, a training gap and a training stop gap. So you will micromanage that rhythm and expect and ask him and help him into finding that rhythm. And then once that becomes easy, you can expect it of him. Yeah. So you would then say, actually, when I ask you for trot, I expect you to be able to trot around in a nice rhythm until I say I would like something else from you. Yeah. Um, and it is exactly that. It is, it is his responsibility, but at the moment he doesn't really understand that. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes we can get, like you said, he will understand that trot is his responsibility. But the consistency of the trot yes. is out the window. <laughs> yeah. it, it's yeah. that two-beat, oh, no, no, no. Yes, so long as I make it feel yeah. like dun, 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 we're all right. It's like, you can't say I'm not trotting. I'm trotting, mother. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it will be a very good foundation for the next, for the next bit. And again, you can't think about things like asking him to give you connection or more impulsion or more flexibility until you have the basic framework of being relaxed and balanced and in rhythm. And it's not just, let me get that when we talk about rhythm, it's not just the rhythm of his footfalls, yeah. it's that you are in rhythm together, which you are nicely in rhythm. You feel him and you move with him nicely, yeah. which is actually something that's very hard to teach, so that, that's good. I always um, feel I don't have the time to work on myself either because it's so stop start. I need some time, to not think about what he's doing, to be yeah. able to think what position am I in? Yeah. And I never get that time. So my position is all over the place. <laughs> it's not so bad, don't worry about that. And also <laughs> there's no point in being a pretty rider if you're not being an effective rider. Yeah. I'd much rather see a few things to correct positionally, which I'll shout as I go, you know, yeah. 
um, than than have someone who who sits really beautifully but actually yeah. can't ride. But if if I get him to the point where he can just trot, then that's when when you're shouting at me, do this, that, and the other. I've got more time, and you can do to it. Take yeah. it in, <laughs> and, and as well, and I'm the same like this. It's quite hard to keep. You know, at this stage, you need to keep 75 different things in your head at once. And I, you know, I notice it with you, and I know that I'm the same, that as soon as I start talking to you or asking you to do something different, you've lost whatever you were doing well because you've got distracted and you're trying to do something else. Yes, yeah. But yeah, I think that was very well done, the pair of you. Well, thank you very much for your time today, You're very Jen. welcome. <laughs> you are such a good boy. And he is actually much more sprightly and, and, and good than you think, isn't he? Yeah. Once he starts to put a bit of effort, he moves very nicely. Yeah, yeah. If you wanted to go a bit more, you know, do a bit of traditional kind of schooling in work with him, I think he'd do it very well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the lesson and my learning. <laughs> I think we got quite a lot out of that lesson, me and Comanche today. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again next time. Bye.